Morgan Gidley, Trump's national press secretary, was recently interviewed by Fox and Bill Hemmer asked him a fascinating question that I didn't expect, but Hogan Gidley's response was even better. So let's watch. The social media crackdown, does he feel emasculated, especially as he heads out of office? Look, I, I wouldn't say emasculated. I mean, if, if the most masculine person I think to ever hold the White House is the President of the United States. But is he? Is he really? I mean, I think it's important to reflect on Donald Trump's four years in office. I was sitting at the table, we had finished dinner, we're now having dessert. And we had the most beautiful piece of chocolate cake that you've ever seen. You know what? So unfair. It's so unfair. And we would go back and forth. And then we fell in love, okay? No, really, he wrote me beautiful letters. And they're great letters. We fell in love. Well, it's been very unfair uh, from the day I won. Uh, and I really say from far before the day I won, from the day I came down the escalator. I'll kiss the guys and the beautiful women and um, everybody. I'll just give you a big fat kiss. Breaking and cleaning and doing things and they don't have any problem. Our canine, as they call, I call it a dog, a beautiful dog, a talented dog. I just, I, I, I've got nothing to add. I, I was expecting him to do the whole, you know, his hands. He always likes to do his hands like that when he's just describing the shape of a woman. Maybe, maybe that's what the guy was <laughs> talking about. I don't know, but yeah, a man's man. The man has spent far more money than like ten women combined for their entire lives. On bronzer alone, like <laughs> he, no one wears bronzer more than Donald Trump. Like I don't. By the way, like I don't even know. Okay, let me be clear. Um, I don't want anyone to think that I buy into the stereotypical, right. you know, expectations of what masculinity is. Uh, masculinity is what you want it to be as a man. If you're confident in who you are, that's all that matters. But Donald Trump, the man who hid in a bunker, as Demonstrations were taking place in this country last summer. The man who was paralyzed as Congress members' lives were in danger by insurrectionists who had breached the Capitol. Donald Trump has shown us over and over again that he's a coward, right? He is a full blown coward. There's nothing strong about him. He hasn't shown an ounce of leadership during this last four years in office. To, I mean, Matt, what is Hogan Gidley? What are you doing, Hogan Gidley? Why are you embarrassing yourself like this? Why? Why? Because he has to take his regular offering to the altar of Donald Trump, right? You know, it's like kissing the ring. It's like you know, kneeling down at the feet of their dear leader. Um, and 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 the, the fact that really at this point there's no need to do it because Donald Trump is going to be gone next week. So you know, why waste that little bit of your dignity for a week's worth of recognition? I don't know. I don't. I don't. I really don't get it. Um, but I do want to also talk about something that I've noticed with the right, and it's a broader issue, which is like Bill Hemmer's framing was weird, right? Because okay, you, they want to have a discussion about what's going on with Twitter. You know how how does Donald Trump feel about the fact that he has been permanently banned from Twitter? But that's not how he asked the question. He's like, does Trump feel emasculated by this? Does he feel? <laughs> Does he feel like a cuck? Like, you know, like their <laughs> mind automatically goes in that direction. I don't know why. Like, why are why are right wing men mm. so mm. concerned about masculinity? Like they're so afraid of appearing non-masculine. Yeah. And just that alone makes them not appear very strong. I'm just gonna I, keep it real. I, I, I've got a theory and and maybe it's it, it might be the man part because you know, if if it just, it just strikes me as them not wanting to be wrong about any type of situation and refusing to accept accountability and responsibility. In addition to genuflecting before Donald Trump, all that said, maybe to them it is to be emasculated is to lose. Like if you lose, if you don't get what you want and you don't get your way, they define that as emasculation. So I mean, that might just be an extension of toxic masculinity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a really good point. I mean, 
when in reality, like I, I give people credit for, you know, sticking their neck out or putting themselves in a situation where they could lose or they could look bad. I'm not talking about Republicans in this case, but just people in general, when they're willing to put something on the line to, to engage in something that they believe in, right? Something that they think is the right cause, knowing that they could fail, but it's worth it to put themselves out there anyway. Look, I mean, the example that comes to mind is honestly Jenk and his willingness to run for Congress, even though it was like the worst few months of my life, and I'm sure his life too. It was awful. It was an awful process. And he, you know, wanted to do it not because being in Congress is glamorous, it's actually pretty awful, but because he wanted to fight, you know, as, as a member of Congress, as a progressive. And yeah, he lost. He lost by a lot. And he doesn't let any of the like criticisms get to him or the ridicule. Of course, people love to clown on him for it, but he's like, no, I uh, took a risk. I felt like it was the right thing to do and it didn't work out. It's okay, off to the next. Like that to me is strength, right? Well, yeah. Not, yeah. No, I, I was gonna say, like, if, if you're not willing to take an opportunity, take a risk, right? And we're not talking about taking a financial risk, we're talking about taking a, a, a risk with your ego. If you're not willing to take a risk with your ego, you certainly, don't need to be in leadership in this country. Totally, or leadership in general in anything. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun, but you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video, thank you.